before you get too comfortable in my kitchen, I want to warn you, we've got a couple of episodes coming up that are going to be absolutely great and they're all happening outside. So be looking forward for that. But today we do happen to be back in the kitchen and we're talking about a very simple recipe that all of us can make that may have sounded daunting to you in the past and may have not even hit your radar of how important and valuable it can be health-wise. Today we're learning how to make candied ginger and it's so simple and so delicious, I promise it's worth it. Stick with us. Before we get started with this really simple recipe, I want to talk you through just a couple of things. First of all, you can get ginger pretty simply at most grocery stores, and what you're looking for is the smoothest, plumpest ginger that they have available. This is a perfect example of smooth and plump, and yes, they're always going to have some little knots and nubbins and elbows on them, that's okay, but the smoother and plumper the better. Also, if you let it sit on your counter a few days, you'll notice it grows these wonderful little starts of ginger. And we're going to have another um, video where we'll show you exactly how to get it started in your own garden. It's incredibly easy to grow if you know how to do it and prepare the soil right and get it in the right location. And you're going to have a very easy crop of wonderful ginger all year round. In another video, we'll show you exactly how to do that. So literally you can have enough ginger year round growing to feed you and your family and even your friends. But that's for another video. So right now for today, let's get started with how to peel ginger. For today, I'm setting this one aside so we can actually plant that in the garden. But we're gonna take this plump, one that's ready to peel and if I was a gourmet chef this is mostly how they do it they take a regular tablespoon and peel it literally by scraping because it has a very very thin skin and we're just scraping that off this is actually a rhizome which is the the lowest part of the stem of the plant that is that makes up ginger and this is one way to peel it Another way to do it, which let me show you how I often do it, is with your grandma's potato peeler. And sometimes just doing it with grandma's potato peeler is going to make you feel uh, endeared to her. Although you will go over some of these nubbins and that's just fine. You may lose a little bit in the process, but I don't mind. So I'm going to just get this peeled up and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Now we're gonna give it a good rinse under some nice cold water. Get all the extra skin pieces off. All right, we've already done the hardest part of the whole recipe and that was just getting it peeled and it was very simple. But I wanna show you something before we go any further and that is that there's a certain grain to ginger. It's easiest on this where you can see as ginger grows, the grain kind of goes with it and we're going to want to cut across the grain when we start cutting it up. So just pay attention to that. When you see that all of the little pithiness kind of ends here at the nubbins on the end, you'll know that's the way the grain goes and you wanna cut against it in nice thin slices. Really the thinner the better, but pay attention as you look at each of these and that's how you'll want to cut it. So I'll start with the smallest piece and we're just gonna cut it in as thin of pieces as we can and there's no scientific perfect way to do it. Yours might look different than mine and that's okay. And sometimes it's pithier than others, but that's part of the reason why we go against the grain because it'll make it very tender as an end product. So let me get this all sliced up and I'll meet you back here as we set it on to boil. We've got it all sliced up and the less pithy the better, but it's just fine if it's a little pithy, just make sure you slice it extra thin. I've got it all nice and rinsed and finished being cut up, so I'm going to put it in my Revereware pan. And again, I would recommend a stainless steel pan that is not uh, coated in the inside. Stainless steel is gonna be great. This old Revereware pan is gonna be perfect. Now I'm going to fill it with filtered water just to cover and I'm going to bring it to a boil on the stove on medium heat. Ginger is actually a flowering plant that originated in China. 
I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of the family, but ginger is very closely related to turmeric and cardamom, which also are very great at anti-inflammatory properties. The way we make this is by boiling, just to a boil, three different times those ginger uh, pieces that we've cut up. So I'm going to go ahead and pour off this water, and that water is absolutely valuable. We'll talk about it here in a minute why. But what you're going to do first is just strain off all the water from that, fill it up with fresh water again, and we'll boil it again. So we're going to do that three different times. And let me just say the reason we do that three times is because ginger, if, you, if you've ever tried it raw, you know it is extremely tart. It's, it's hot. It will burn your tongue and burn your mouth. So when we boil it in the water, it just takes off the edge. So it's not going to burn our mouth as, as candied ginger. It's going to just have a real hotness to it, but not to burn us and the water that we bring off of it is perfect for making everything from kombucha to uh, ginger beer to oh, oh so many different recipes simple syrup that's ginger and so delicious there are a million different ways we can use it so keep every drop of the water that comes off from this you will love it later but don't drink it straight or you will burn your lips I have tried it and it's that strong so we'll let this go ahead and boil another two times and then we'll do the last little process that will turn it into just what we want as the finished product. All right, we've had our third full boil and I am turning this off and I'm going to go ahead and strain it again in with the rest of it. All right, what we're gonna do is a little different here. I'm going to take half a cup of this liquid and pour it back into my empty pot and put with it one cup of sugar. And that sugar can be demerara or morena sugar or just table sugar, whatever you've got. But I'm going to put one cup of sugar in and it's going to make kind of a thick syrup. And I'm going to turn it back to a medium heat and stir it up a bit and we're just gonna let that dissolve. And then we'll throw all the ginger right back in there with it. All right, this has come to a boil and that's all I need for me to see that it's time to go ahead and throw those back into it and we'll let it kind of boil down into a thicker syrup. Once these get back in there with it, we'll give it a few minutes to just kind of thicken and boil down and coat really well all of those wonderful pieces of ginger. And this won't take but another minute or two to get that going. You'll notice I've got a slotted spoon which makes this easy. Helps me to be able to stir them without the syrup getting caught on this. But virtually what we're making here is a simple syrup that is just coating all of these. And we're going to bring it to a low rolling boil and then we're going to watch it carefully but just let it evaporate for just a few minutes, maybe five minutes. You'll know by watching it and you'll just see it get thicker and thicker and less liquid in there. And that's a good sign because as it coats those, they'll be ready for our next thing, which let me show you right over here. We've already got started in preparation. What I've got is a thin layer of sugar spread across the bottom of this. I like to use all of the thick raw sugar, but I incidentally had used some morena sugar, which is that whitish colored sugar you see in there as well. So I just mixed them together from my last batch. And that's why you see a few of these that have been a little chunks that have been affected by moisture and that's just fine with me. I just spread a thin layer of this and once the ginger has been coated fully with the simple syrup over on the stove that's boiling down and getting thicker, we're going to just take it with a fork and lay each piece out on here and then you can do it a couple of different ways. Some people just toss it in the sugar and I happen to be one that if I have enough sugar left from last time, I'll go ahead and just sprinkle it over the top of them to cover them completely in sugar as a second layer. And that way I just make sure they get fully sugared and they'll dry up kind of that way over the next few hours and be done. That's it. They kind of do it themselves. We've let this boil down and before I 
post the recipe down below, I want to tell you a couple of things that I should have said earlier. I'm spreading these on here like I mentioned, but this simple syrup that you see them floating in, I ended up adding a second cup of sugar. I thought I could get by with just one cup of sugar with that half cup of liquid and that as it boiled down it would be fine. It would work, but I was in a hurry and I thought, okay, to make it thicker, let me go ahead and just put in that second cup of sugar and that did take care of it, making it thick enough for what we needed as it boiled down. Also, I added a pinch of salt, which I should have added earlier because that would have helped just a little bit in the bubbling of it because it ended up bubbling up all the way and over the top and so I made a good little mess before I was done with this and I don't want you to do the same. So put in a little pinch of salt while you're doing it and that'll help immensely with some of that bubbleage that you're going to get where it wants to bubble all the way to the top of the pan. Once I have these spread out, I sprinkle sugar over the top and then we'll let them sit. Oh, you could just let them sit overnight probably and by tomorrow they will be perfection and ready to be jarred up. It's a brand new day and as these waited all through the night in the sugar, boy, I wanted to come in and get a taste test, but I refrained just for you so that we could do it together here today on video. Um, all we have left is to put them in little jars and through the night they kind of dried out, they soaked up that sugar and in a way are pliable. Some of them are even dry to the touch, but that's the way that you want them. All we have to do now is put them in jars and put some, I usually put a little silica gel packet in them to keep them nice and dry and I'll put a bow around them so that they're ready to give as gifts or to tuck away in the cupboard for a few months until I get a real sugar craving and this ginger is going to be just the treat. This truly is one of my favorite things and I'm glad you joined me for this simple recipe. Just the process of making the candied ginger gives us this wonderful byproduct that we can make with all of that water that we boiled off the ginger. This is super strong, but it will make a beautiful ginger syrup. It will make candies. It will make, oh my goodness, ginger beer. There are so many different things that I can do with this that will make other recipes enhanced. Then I have a few gifts to give other friends and these will keep for several months if they're kept well. And then I have some for myself and I can eat it just like this when I get a sugar craving or I can drop it in my tea at night or if I have an upset stomach, all I have to do is just put a couple of these in my tea water and stir it, let it steep and I will enjoy a wonderful delicious little hot ginger tea that's already sweetened for me. And I know, I really know that some of you diabetics out there are just shaking your hand, head at me right now, probably thinking, why are we doing something with so much sugar? But I've rationalized it that ginger is so good for diabetics. Maybe it sort of counterbalances <laughs> the sugar that we've coated it with. I don't know. I hope to think that, but it is a nice little treat when you need something sweet that will also settle your stomach. I hope you'll take time to make this, share this recipe with somebody you love, and I'll see you next time. Hey, here's the best part. This is out of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So be encouraged today and go spread the word.